What up Raffleitos, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back Raffle Nation. If you're new to this channel, this is Raffle Nation coming out of Georgetown, Guyana. We talk about politics, economics, food and fun here in Georgetown, Guyana. And right now we're going through an election cycle that is compounded by the coronavirus pandemic that is hitting the world globally. So what I want to do today is to continue from where I left off. This is the second episode of a four-part episode, um, four episodes, in which I'm giving you my analysis of what happened during this previous election cycle. So I brought you up to date on where the vote count is in the last, um, that's the initial episode. And I, like I said, there are three other topics that are introduced. The first one is my awards for all of the, um, each and every one of the uh, participants, the um, the presidential candidates <clears throat> in this election cycle. Remember there were nine political parties that made it to election day and made it on the ballots and I want to give you my assessment of each one of them so that you can get an idea, a kind of um, color picture of what we're dealing with in 2020 as far as the quality of uh, the political um, representation in Guyana and the culture and, and the color of our election cycle. There's a lot that can be brought out by simply um, analyzing who the best performers are, what the strengths and weaknesses are, and who should get um, awards for what. Secondly, like I said, the most important um, issue in this election cycle is the oil and gas industry. So the, the real battle is, 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 is a struggle to control the oil and gas industry, which is likely to be um, transformative for the Guyanese economy and so I wanted to take that out and deal with it separately and that's exactly what I will deal with in this issue and then the third episode has to do with my analysis like I said I'm gonna tell you exactly who I voted for why I voted for them and why in fact the the statistical analysis of the voter um, vote count so far is well uh, in line with expectations. It's exactly the way things turned out in 2015. So there is no reason to call this election a rigging. I will show you from the electrical, from the statistical analysis of the election. But let me take out um, issue number two first and deal with it because it's the most pressing issue at this time. And that is, what is the status of Guyana's oil and gas industry? Where are we? In April 2020. Now, if you've been following the news globally, you know that oil prices have been crashing. There is, in fact, an unprecedented um, level of oil uh, in the markets right now. Uh, what is referred to as a glut of oil on the markets. There is a collapse in demand because of the coronavirus. Um, pandemic which has caused most economies to shut down and therefore the demand for um, oil and oil products has collapsed right there's no more flying you know international flights have been cancelled because most countries closed their borders that means there is no uh, demand for jet fuel people have, have been asked to stay home and to shelter in place and cities have been put on lockdown which means that there's not a whole lot of transportation and so there is not a demand for fuel for um, cars and buses and trucks and so on. So the demand has collapsed and what has happened in the last 24 hours is that the, the price of oil has actually gone negative. The futures have shown that um, countries and companies are paying you, are willing to pay you to take oil off their hands. And so a barrel of oil is going for zero dollars or in fact negative 37 dollars if, if you look at the futures in some markets but the actual price the actual sale price of oil in the last last i checked is about uh 22 dollars a barrel between 22 26 and 22 dollars a barrel 26 for, for brent crude, crude which is the kind of oil we have we have brent crude um which is uh light sweet crude and it's going for about between 22 and 26 dollars a barrel um on the, on the global markets and it's trending downwards in fact it can likely hit $15 a barrel so real issue that we want to discuss here is what has happened to Guyana's 
oil industry in the wake of this global economic collapse and particularly the collapse of the um, of oil prices around the globe weary what is the status of Guyana's oil industry now the first point is that we actually sold our first shipment of oil in February to Shell and we sold it for $55 a barrel so a million barrels of oil were sold at $55 a barrel and we got $55 million which was placed into our sovereign wealth fund which is held at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York so currently what we have is $55 million from the sale of our first uh, shipment our first um, portion of profit oil now I've discussed this before that we in fact are expected to collect a shipment of one million dollars of profit oil every 67 days once the production ramps up to 120 120 barrels per day now it turns out that the production has not reached 120 barrels per day but is likely to do so sometime in May and that is when we're expecting our next shipment of uh, 1 million barrels of oil the question is what is the current situation in terms of market and sale of that oil well it turns out only recently we learned that our contract to sell this oil the first three shipments of oil to Shell was not hedged in other words we did not agree on a price for all 3 million barrels of oil from the beginning which means that although we got $55 million for the first shipment of a million barrels of oil the May shipment of a million barrels of oil will fetch whatever price is current in May and then 67 days after that in July May, June, July maybe the uh, end of August depending on the beginning of August or middle of August depending on whether in fact we do get up to 120 barrels per day will determine that is the price at, at that time the price in July or, or August will determine how much we receive and that price is looking more and more down towards $15 a barrel so it, it's right now around $20 a barrel if it holds at 20 we'll probably get 20 million dollars if it drops to 15 we will get 15 million dollars so let us say we can expect an average of about 15 million dollars for each of the next two shipments that we've already pre-sold to Shell which means that we're probably going to end up with 30 million dollars 30 to 40 million dollars for the next two shipments of oil that we have pre-sold to Shell and therefore we can expect by August say to have about 95 million US dollars in our sovereign wealth fund after three shipments so the question is what happens after that and these are the questions I want to answer one what is the actual schedule or schedule for delivery of our five of our shipments of oil well we were expected to receive five shipments of oil in 2020 based on a production schedule of 120,000 barrels per day my guess however is that because of the collapse of the oil prices global oil prices my guess is that uh, Exxon Mobil is not going to be um, too anxious to produce oil at 120,000 barrels per day and eventually will get there later in the year so I don't think we will probably get our five shipments my guess is that we'll end up with about three shipments this year but let's wait and see what happens okay so the next question is what about strategic storage so the problem with collecting oil later in the year is that if the price of oil drops to zero or you know close to zero it doesn't make sense for us to sell oil then we should probably store it right like I said one way in which I think Exxon will respond to this price drop is that they will uh, slow down the production rate so that it doesn't really get up to 120 thousand barrels per day which means that Guyana will probably not get its five shipments but if we do end up with the fourth and the fifth shipment 
because Exxon decided to proceed with production as previously decided 120,000 barrels per day then we will expect those shipments to be delivered in October and December and now we're sitting with we will have 2 million barrels of oil that we really can't sell because you know the market there's a glut on the market so the question is should Guyana be investing in uh, storage now the fact is that there was an intention to build a pipeline to shore from the um, oil rigs in Guyana the problem is the politicians couldn't decide where to land the pipeline on shore and for that reason the pipeline was never built however it makes sense to set up storage facilities that is huge storage uh, tanks on land here in Guyana and to build that pipeline sometime between now and uh, December so that we could store that oil and not have to sell it for zero dollars not have it wasted that is provided that Exxon goes ahead and pumps 120,000 barrels per day so I'm all for storage and right now the uh, this there's such a glut on the market you can't even rent storage because initially a year ago I suggested that we perhaps purchase storage tank uh, oil tankers you know uh, an oil tanker that could that can hold about two million barrels of oil if we had that in our possession we could simply have the oil sitting out there on the ocean waiting for a time to sell but problem is we can't even rent storage now because there's a glut all the storage um, capacity has already been taken up so storage is something we should be considering. We should also be considering seriously putting in refineries because eventually, if we're gonna be uh, selling our oil for zero or next to nothing, but we still need to buy uh, fuel, it might make more sense to simply take our oil, which is free because the price goes to zero, and refine it ourselves for our own use. All right, so that was, those are the issues that have to do with oil. The question now is what to do with the money. So we should be sitting on about $95 million, but we're dealing with a global pandemic. We're dealing with uh, economic hardship in Guyana because like everywhere else in the world, the economy has uh, almost come to a halt. But unlike places like the United States and Canada and Europe, where um, our their uh, politicians have put measures in place to replace people's income, people who can't work are now receiving some kind of universal basic income. Guyanese have not, um, no arrangements have been made for Guyanese to really receive any payments in lieu of salary because they're, they're not working, right? So the question is, shouldn't we spend some of that money that is based on the fact that we have now have it in cash or will have it in cash uh, in the Federal Bank of New York, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, shouldn't we be able to spend some of that money for to provide a universal basic income? This is a question I addressed earlier and everybody was against it for one reason or another. They said that people would be, become lazy if you give them money, if you give them free money, but none of those people are complaining now when they're about to lose their mortgages, lose their houses because they can't pay their mortgages in New York or LA or wherever they live in the US. These same Americans, Guyanese Americans, were saying, look, uh, you can't give Guyanese free money because they'll become lazy lazy but they're now collecting this universal basic income in the US and in Canada right so this is the kind of hypocrisy that I've, I've pointed out in the past but in fact it's something that we need to deal with because Guyana is in, in, in the same situation that Canada and the US uh, residents find themselves Guyanese can't work and can't um, earn a living the problem is we don't have a government in place because we are in a stalemate as far as the outcome from the last election which brings me back to the point of this election cycle and analyzing the election cycle but I'm gonna leave that for episode number three where I'll talk about the um, statistical analysis of uh, the current election cycle which leads me to the conclusions that I made and, and explain to you why based on statistics I chose to vote the way I did but and in, in the fourth episode I will deal with um, you know, analyzing the performance of each of our current crop of politicians. But here's the takeaway. We are not doing so badly because we did in fact make $55 million from the first shipment of oil and we will get some money, although we will lose about $80 million. The, the, the potential of earning $80 million if we had pre-sold all of that 3 million um, barrels of oil at $55 a barrel, which we had the option to do in February, we didn't do that. 
we will, because we didn't do that, we will lose about $80 million, but we will still make about $30 million to $40 million in additional um, income based on uh, the expected price in the next several months, next three or four months, when we expect to get our uh, next two shipments of oil. So that's the situation, guys. Tell me what you think about the situation with oil and gas in Guyana. Tell me what you think about uh, how we're performing, how we're dealing with the global oil pandemic in Guyana, and what you think we should do as far as the universal basic income for Guyanese. Remember, you can share this video with friends and family around the world, like and subscribe, let people know what's happening in Georgetown, Guyana. Later!